Okay, um, I actually thought that we might be better off just, uh, well, as with all these builds, and this one's been a particularly popular one, um, I thought we would go through this. The designation for this one is B-R-T-U, which is uh, brew to you, which because it, it carries drinks. So thank you, Sam Prentice, for that one, who had naming rights for this particular little baby. Um, so I want to just take you through um, a little bit on how this thing goes together. So uh, let me just strip out the can lift, the dry, the main body, the driver cabin seat. So um, effectively, the drive unit is exactly the same as the egg bot, really. Um, I'm not going to go through this in detail because the Eggbot video does actually cover this quite nicely. But effectively, what you've got is a very fairly fairly simple system, um, and I'll just I'll just quickly show you how this system works. You've got a drive motor here in the middle. Um, the drive motor has got a beveled gear. The bevel gear drives this beveled gear on this outer rim. Um, and then there's an inner rim with that and it's all held together with a frame. Um, and if you look at here, this has got two half, kind of half centered, half, half or whatever they are, uh, semicircle tracks, which I found have been really, this particular track design is something that I've used in loads of them, something that I came up with. Uh, specifically for 3D printing, it works really, really well. So this this just uses the same track design, exactly the same on the AL the ALT uh, one to one. Scaling wise, it's exactly 50%. So if you wanted to scale this up for a full size one, which I will be releasing full size scaled um, files, it will just scale straight up. Okay, um, and then there's a couple of outer bits. And again, if you refer to the Eggbot really for that then that's your basic drive system. What you get out of the drive system is two motor cables that come through those bits and that's where your electronics go. So I'm not going to cover too much on the drive system. The next thing I'll cover is the main body. Okay, so, um, actually I put one piece in wrong there. As I said, this is, this is all quite new, so I'll move that into the seat because that's in there. Okay, so this is the main body. So the main body consists of the main frame and some greebles. Let me remove the greebles. So the main frame looks like this. It's a single print, very, very easy to print. Um, I printed this on a dot eight uh, nozzle, um, 0.2 layer height and a single wall. So I've always put two or three walls, but I did a single wall and this came out brilliantly. Uh, really quite strong. Uh, so this is the frame. The frame's got these little marks on the inside here, which that's the can system fits in there. You've got a couple of screws that hold the can system and it attaches to the skirt with four screws. They're M3 screws, self-tapping. Um, this bit here is about nine mil, I think. I think it's nine mil thick. So an M, uh, M315 or M320 will quite happily go into there. You've got plenty of space to hold them in in those four little screws and that holds this bit in. What I have put in here is three spaces for magnets, one, two, three, um, which is a typical 10 millimeter diameter by five millimeter deep magnets. Whether you actually uh, need the magnets, I don't know, because actually when I put the base in, it doesn't need them, but hey-ho. I'll just talk through the greebles. So these are the greebles that are on it at the moment. Um, there's these nice little detailed ones here on the side. Um, there and there, as you can see, they're mirrors. You've got two vent greebles here on here which are kind of side panels with vents um, effectively these I've, I've stolen from uh, the galaxy edge drinks cart just reconfigured it a little bit and this is from the drinks cart as well but i've reconfigured the size and the uh, direction and then you've got a little chimney at the back which i'll cover off what that covers and then this little fellow is probably familiar to many people who built mouse droids it's actually just the top greeble off the mouse droid one that i've repurposed but it, i think it's a really nice touch reusing these greebles because it keeps it very much within the star wars the, each of these greebles just glue on i use two part um, epoxy to do that what i will be doing you see if you take the greebles the base is actually quite a normal fret quite a fairly basic frame so what we will have is we'll have different greebles so you'll have smoother greebles for the racing droids um, I, I do intend to do a Luke Skywalker land speeder one off the back of that, which has got the three jets. Um, so I'm going to use different customised greebles um, for, for that. So your greebles just print, paint and, and stick on. I printed these actually in FDM and got absolutely amazing results, um, I've got to say. So I'm quite happy with that. 
Um, and then there's this hole here for the cam assembly. But what I will do is I'll utilise this for, for other <coughs> for the greeble style ones. So let's take a drink there. Um, somebody mentioned having a charity collection box. Another one was loudspeaker. So actually, we can use this space for lots and lots of different types. At the moment, this top greeble here with a little chimney covers some of the cabling for when you put the can can mechanism in there so very simple print bolts on all of your batteries and cables kind of fit in this space at the bottom three magnets not sure whether you actually need them what i want to cover now probably is a can mechanism so i'll just hide so we can see the can mechanism can mechanism is fairly simple um, what it prints prints with is the main can uh, frame the can the lid and then a few other things around the servos. So there's two mechanisms mainly. Okay, so there's this mechanism here. This mechanism uses an SG, sorry, an MG90, which is the Metal Gear 90, uh, 90 gram servos to open this. It doesn't need a lot of strength, to be fair. Um, and there's a, a few printed parts, which um, you'll see in the printed box. You've got a uh, you've got a plastic part that glues over this servo horn. Um, and then you've got this as a lifting one. What I've been doing recently actually is using the sort of fairly rigid flexible filament um, as, 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 as levers in here. And what I've done is I've, I've, I've put a lighter on one end, melted it a little bit to a flat point so that it sticks into there, goes right the way through, melted it on the other end and then you've got a pivot point which works quite well. This also is the same for this bit here. So literally just push a piece of filament don't use pla or pet g or anything that absorbs water because it'll absorb water and become brittle the flex filament is superb for that particularly the ones that isn't too flexible which is really good um there's also if you look on here this is these are supports um so if we get rid of that when it prints it prints these two supports you literally just snip these off or snap these out um, and then the servo will just drop in there. It saves having to print multi-print. Um, on the lower ones, I've actually done these differently. Um, so if I get rid of the servos, what, when you print this, you've got two brackets that just screw in place with two screws. Screw the inner one first and then the outer one, otherwise you won't get the screws in there. Um, and all they really do is enable you to screw the, uh, the two servos in. For these servos, I use the S3003s or SG996Rs. Um, they're both quite the very strong servos and then what you've got here is you've got the the actual um, can lift arms um, that again glue onto a standard servo um, on a servo horn and the ones that, that have got both sides but what you want to do is trim them off at that side so that because there's not a lot of room behind when you when you bring in that main body so if you bring in the main body there's no room if you stick the servo horn out so cut the servo horn off with it with a pair of clippers um, as always centralize your servos make sure you know where it's going to be on its low point its upper point you are running these off a of uh, rc so you want a uh, thousand to two thousand um whatever it is milliseconds on the bandwidth anyway so um to, to, to set your servos up and that's really a can lift i mean it's that simple two servos a couple of brackets another servo and a few hinges uh it runs independently so this opens the top and this lifts these up and inside you can see um that they actually we just take the cam frame so that, that these these are your typical 330 milliliters are they or whatever americans call them um, they've got a little thing that sits in the middle and they lift up to pop the cam up with quite a, a reasonable height. The way I configured them on the RC is I used, um, on your stick, you've got your drive stick on the right hand side, left hand side, which is left right that turns your dome. I used the up down stick to open this uh, lid and then what I did is use the two dials on the uh, Flysky um, remote control to lift the cans so actually it doesn't require any electronics any arduinos it's literally running straight off the rc and i'll cover that in a little bit more detail so that's your can lift um the next thing we'll probably cover with the main body and the greebles is what should we cover we will cover the probably the the seat because this is where all the magic happens as they say so let's get rid of the driver and base and let's get rid of the main body and we'll just cover the seat the seat is a single assembly all in one and and when you've actually built this what happens when it's all 
kind of assembled and built together um, what this this entire seat mechanism with the driver cab actually just slots in place into the seat so if I get rid of these I'll show you what I mean by that um, main body gone so you build this this assembly and then these two little pins here and here actually slot into the main body so if you look at the main body you see those screw holes that actually screw to the skirt they're also there to hold that that, that plate in when I said before you've also you, that you use magnets to hold this there's one two three places there for corresponding magnets put your magnets in there and it'll drop in by magnets do you need magnets i haven't used them i just use it on friction and these little things here and it holds perfectly well but again you can do so the um the seat the seat actually fits in and we'll, we'll let's get rid of the driver for the time being because the driver is really just any of the baby astromex but what you've got here is you've got arms and you've got a um, a drive lever and then you've got these cantilevers and what the way this kind of works let me see if i can zoom into here is you've got a stop whoops a daisy yeah you've got a quick little stop here so that it stops the arms from extending too far and effectively the arm the arms are a two-part print which is this and this they both print flat with this on the bed um, and then you just screw these together with M3 screws, about 10 mils. They'll be on the instructions, don't worry about that. And then effectively you've got arms that can't extend beyond their reach, um, but work perfectly well. And then the actual levers again, similar thing. They've got little thin bits, they bolt into there. The whole thing bolts to the actual main body, the driver, um, through two screws at the side. And then effectively, if you pull this lever back this arm will go down if you leave it forward it'll extend so the whole thing is controlled by these little um uh, servo horns and what i've done to conserve space if we look underneath is i put the servo horns inside the seat so the when you build this you print the seat you print the back seat um, this, and then you also print a servo bracket. The servo bracket holds these two servos, and then there's these little um, servo horns that, that literally glue onto the round servo horns of the SG996Rs, um, and they give you the control for those arms. Now, the, the magic happens because what we actually do is on RC, particularly on tank drives, you've got, you've got two cables. You've got either one for steering and one for drive or you've got two for drive depending how you set it up and all i really do is i split the signal so the the actual control signal that normally goes to the speed control that controls the motors uh, i create a cable where there's a split off so it goes two ways it goes one to the speed controller but then the second cable actually goes to these servos so these servos mimic what's going on on the speed controller so what happens then is you get this kind of brilliant look where he's actually pulling these levers back and forth to drive the to drive the um, uh, the cart around however uh, it's literally just mirroring what you do on the remote control so you've not got to control these independently they just happen automatically the only thing that you control independently is believe it or not the dome and the dome um, for anybody who's built the baby R, uh, R series is exactly it's the same body it's the same brackets the only difference is and you can use any printed body already is what you do is you put the printed body in you um, cut through the hole at the bottom which is normally where you screw the um, the center leg in and that bolts in through this little hole here it's self tapping so it self taps into there and then just get a normal drill bit or whatever and just drill into the body frame which lets you then drop that uh, servo to control the dome into the main body cavity so when you're assembling this print the base out print the back these hold together with two m3 i think um let me just have a look how deep those are dig 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 because i think you've got loads of room yeah they're um let's say a distance of yeah the the 20 mil you've, you've got i'd use m m3 10 mils um again they'll be in the instructions you bolt these in that connects this body to the back of the body 
once they're connected what you do then is put the main body in you drop a screw that goes through and self taps into there once the body's attached drill a hole in the bottom that's where your servo cables can drop through um, and then assemble this as per the baby astromech instructions with little gears and whatnot and you just put the dome on and all the, all the bearings and whatnot the same so that that gives you your dome turn and what you have is the dome term servo comes through here along with these two servos and again they all sit inside the cavity um, once you've done that the whole thing then bolts onto the base in three areas one screw there one screw there one screw there they all come through from the bottom and they bolt the seat into place once the seats bolted into place with all of this uh, in place the final thing is we need to secure these um, little steering arms and the way we do that similar to what we did with the uh, can mechanism is we drop a piece of flex filament right the way through there to the other end um, blow torch or match melt the end of the filament and squash them in a little bit and that makes your whole segment the only other part which I've done, um, and this was really just to make it more printable on the Prusas or the Ender 3s, is I've chopped this little end bit off here, and that fits on in, in the four little brackets, and um, we'll pop that on. The other reason I did that is I might want to put a bit of a muscle bonnet on there for different configurations, etc. But that's the assembly. Once you've assembled that, you'll have three uh, servo cables come out of here, uh, which will control this, this whole body. Um, and that that really then enables you to kind of assemble the whole thing together so what once you've assembled it you built the main drive system as I said you've taken and I'll just get rid of the driver cab and the droid uh, the driver cab and the seat out there this is the main drive yeah um, so so what happens in here then is all of the cables that come from these servos here wrap around this body and they come into this cavity and you'll see a couple of slots there's a slot there and a slot there therefore cable ties just put cable ties through and it'll hold those cables wrapped around and there's enough space at the side to fit the two the two sets of cables that you need then this plate here with a little chimney actually goes on top to hide the cables it doesn't matter if this cable from this top servo shows it's all a little bit of it, extra detail which is great the cables drop through to here and then you can drop your battery your rc controller in there etc etc and these splitter cables now your rc controller and your speed controller will connect to the two um the two motors um and then what you do is on the uh, control signals that you've got for each motor you connect those to the arm of the droid you connect the actual head um, the, 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 the dome rotation to um, channel 3 on the, the RC you connect this lid onto channel 4 and the two can lifts on channel 5 and 6 and then actually without any extra electronics you've got full control of this unit and then actually when you want to get access to the battery all that happens is this whole seat mechanism with the cab with the droid pulls off once you pulled off you disconnect you can get access to the battery um, and you can pop this little driver back in place um, and the driver works and that's pretty much it to be honest I mean obviously the features you've got when you're driving around he's got these really cool arms go back and forth you've got his head which spins um, the arms go back and forth as you start to drive around and then wherever he stops the uh, the cans open and close now when we talk about future features or, or where i'm going with this is what i'm looking at is if i strip out the can the actual can lift unit um and i strip out the greebles what i end up with is a really good base droid now what i'm what i've also ordered is a 20.4 um, to one ratio polar loo and you've got to use the high power motors this is a track droid it does need that extra oomph you know these are 5.6 amp, amp motors i've ordered the uh, 9.5 to one ratio which is double the speed um and what i'm going to do and i've also ordered some electronic speed controllers that will that will handle up to 16 volts because what i'm going to run is i'm going to run 4s in there rather than 5s which is 14.8 volts maybe 15 volts um, on the double the speed motors now in this configuration without the extra weight 
that means this bloody thing will fly like a little racer thing okay so you'll have a couple of configurations you can drop the ratio down you can actually drop it down to below the 20.4 if you want to start to give it even more torque or you can ramp it right up to these these but always use the high power ones um with the with the right rated speed controller um, and then my plan is that what i'll do here is i'll i'll have a little thing that slots using these two screws over the top of here it's a bit more streamlined uh, i do intend to do the land speeder jets at the back of there um, and then each of these little areas that we've got for greebles we can use for different configurations so we can have jets off the back you can have guns that come out if you want to do a um, B, uh, bt11 a little bit of an evil droid we can we can have uh, different things that come out of there and all of them will drive the same way they've got the arm driving um they've got the head turning and also this this front piece here as well can be changed so we can have an elongated muscle car thing there's lots of things lots of configurations and lots of options on here and all it really it needs to happen is you just design new greebles and stick them on so this thing is actually going to be incredibly customizable to whatever you want to do and it's actually a relatively simple build um, so I'm certainly going to build probably a few of these I've started printing more tracks now because I want two or three of these with different configurations um, but for your family barbecue for example you can run this if you want a bit of extra torque put in the 14.8 um, volt uh, drive you can you can get lower gear, gears or ratios this can drive around the barbecue and pop a few beers out for people um, just quite a bit of fun in the old Star Wars universe so hopefully that was useful um, and um, you know we'll start to see these things come out into the world in a little bit more real life and start to drive around as we've uh, as we've seen in the videos and um, yeah have fun so keep uh, your eyes peeled for new files um, I'll also obviously put full instructions with the bill of materials in. I know I've talked through them fairly quickly on here, but what I wanted to do was just give you a good insight into this little fella because I think is a little bit exciting in the old Dryer Builders universe. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, blah, blah, blah. Take care, have fun, stay safe, and be cool like Fonzie. Bye.